Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Mouse Club podcast. My name is Marissa, and I am the host of this podcast. Welcome. I'm so excited that you're joining me today. If you're new, welcome to the Mouse Club. So excited to have you. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. Um, We're actually hitting 700 plays this week, which is insane to me. So thank you guys so much for listening. And thank you to those of you who found me by one episode and are going back and listening to other episodes. I really do appreciate it so, so, so much. Um, Anyway, this week we are going to be talking about some of my favorite fall places in Orlando. I'm going to be talking about in the parks, outside of the parks, and I think you guys are absolutely going to love this episode. I know a lot of people who listen to this podcast love to travel, and I think that it's really important while you're in Orlando to see some other cool places as well because Orlando honestly has so many amazing places and things to do, and I feel like some people just focus a lot on... um, you know, Disney or Universal or SeaWorld or the parks, and you could miss quite a lot of really exciting stuff. So I'm excited to share some of my favorite spots for you guys. You can kind of add them to your bucket list. And if you've done anything in Orlando that you really associate with fall, let me know my latest picture um, when I post it. And I'd be really excited to hear your thoughts. Nala is licking the bed next to me, so I apologize if you can hear that. But anyway, guys, I'm really excited for this episode. But of course, as always, we are going to start with some Disney news. So the first piece of news is Disney Plus released their fall, what's the word, a lineup? (laughs) All of their releases and new releases coming out. So in September on the 18th, so this is probably out already by the time you're listening, Becoming... Uh, I guess that's a a new original show is coming out. Also on the 25th, The Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom. Very excited to see that. Also on the 25th, The Secret Society of Second Born Royals, which is a movie. As far as new releases, so these are not originals. Um, Once Upon a Time is coming on, Bend It Like Beckham, Ever After, The Fault in Our Stars, and Hidden Figures. I'm really excited to see Hidden Figures because I have not seen it yet. In October for originals, we have The Right Stuff, Meet the Chimps, Clouds, Once Upon a Snowman, which looks really cute. It's a new uh, Frozen short, The Big Fib, and The Mandalorian, which I'm super excited about. And as far as new releases go, Maleficent, The Simpsons, Cheaper by the Dozen 2, The Chronicles of Narnia, Voyage of the Dawn Treader, X2, X-Men United, those are all coming. And then in November, we have the Lego Star Wars Holiday Special, The Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse, and Marvel 616. And as far as new releases go, Planes and Planes Fire and Rescue. So I'm really excited about a lot of those. And then also this week, WandaVision, the trailer for WandaVision um, was released. I am so excited. Scarlet, Scarlet Witch is my favorite Avenger. I'm so excited to see this series. I think it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. I can't wait to see Elizabeth Olsen acting as well. And then Disney Eats released some new pictures and um, a new foodie guide to fall, which you can find on their page. But they posted some pictures that look just absolutely delicious. Um, They posted like a new milkshake that looks delicious. Um, some like little spooky sandwiches looks like a tiramisu with like a skeleton coming out of it a little pumpkin pastry whoopie pie cupcakes all kinds of delicious looking treats so you can definitely go check those out if you want to see those and that is pretty much all of the news for this week Um, as usual guys Please be sure to hit the subscribe button on whatever platform that you're listening to this on. And if you'd like to leave me a rating and review, I would greatly appreciate it. I'd be happy to give you a shout out in my next episode. We actually do have a shout out today, so I'm really excited to read this one. Let me grab it real quick so I can read it for you guys. So this one, it was by Allie as always. You may have heard from her in our last episode. And she put, what an absolute delight. Marissa is an absolute shining light and her podcast reflects her lovely personality and amazing knowledge of Disney World and Universal Studios and much more. I definitely recommend you subscribe and hang out at the Mouse Club for some good pure fun and great info and insightful discussions. So thank you so, so, so much, Allie. That really does help my platform grow when you guys leave ratings and reviews. So be sure to check out Allie as always on her youtube and instagram pages 
And also, if you'd like to follow us on the Mouse Club Podcast Instagram, it is at the Mouse Club Podcast, where I post a lot of polls, activities, fun things like that. So you do not want to miss it over there. And anyway, guys, quick break, and then we'll be right back with our episode. So everyone, getting on to today's episode, I am seriously so excited for this episode because Orlando is just such a cool place, and I think I had just have like a lot of nostalgia for Orlando because that's where I went to college, and it's where Blake and I started dating, where we got married, and there's really so many beautiful places in Orlando that I genuinely I have <laughs> quite a long list so I'm really excited to share with you guys and tell you about some of my favorite places in Orlando and around the parks to enjoy uh, fall and I hope that you guys really enjoy. So first off I have to mention where Blake and I got married which was the Winter Park Farmer's Market and I haven't really been to the Farmer's Market in particular but what I think is a really f- cool fun activity here for the fall is right in front of the farmer's market are really old train tracks and you can take really nice pictures on the train tracks here like really nice fall pictures they won't be super fall because nothing really turns like red or orange in florida it's gonna be pretty green but you can get dressed in some really cute outfits please be safe don't take pictures on the actual train tracks but you can get a really nice view of the train tracks behind you and of course take extra caution but I think that it's a really fun activity for sure. Next, um, this one is another really fun place. It's called Lake Eola and they also have a farmer's market. I have been to this farmer's market probably hundreds of times. I'm not even kidding. I love the farmer's market at Lake Eola um, in downtown Orlando. This is actually where Blake and I got engaged and the farmer's market itself has so many amazing treats. They have alcoholic drinks, they have homemade goods, they have um, one place in particular is a produce stand and they sell corn on the cob and they put like spices on it. Oh my gosh, it's so delicious. And they also have boiled peanuts. And this is the place in particular I wanted to mention for this particular podcast episode because in the fall seasons, they have uh, pumpkins from their own farm. And so it's like a nice little pumpkin patch and you can take really cute pictures, get a nice pumpkin, and you're also supporting a small business. And like I said, while you're there, you can try so many different treats from around the farmer's market. And there's just so many that I could mention that I just absolutely love. So definitely check out Lake Eola or put it on your list for next time because it is amazing and I am a very big fan. (laughs) Next up is a coffee shop called Duo 58. I think they have a couple of locations now. Um, Particularly why I put them on my list is because they have what I believe to be the best banana bread in the entire world. On top, there's like a layer of cinnamon and sugar And the banana bread is so moist. And I think that there is pretty much nothing more fall than getting a nice pastry or baked good with some tea or some coffee or hot chocolate and just sitting down and relaxing and enjoying it. I recommend to pair with the banana bread, the Lorax Latte, which is a vanilla latte. And I'm honestly not even that much of a coffee person. Caffeine like really triggers my mental health, so I don't drink it. But if you do drink coffee, the Lorax is super delicious. And if you don't drink coffee, they have a bunch of other different drinks. But the banana bread in particular is what you have to try here. I also love Duo because they are um, run by a lot of volunteers. A lot of people do get paid there, but they are run by a lot of volunteers. They really do give back to their community. Blake actually volunteered here for a couple of months when he was learning um, how to make coffee. And it was a really good time. I would come in, have some banana bread, (laughs) and hang out. And it's just a really cool organization. They do a lot for their community. They send people on mission trips. I do believe it is like a Christian-based coffee house. But um, it's absolutely amazing. You have to try their banana bread. Next up is another coffee shop. It's called Vesper, V-E-S-P-R. And this is more towards like college town UCF area. So it is a little bit of a ways from Disney. I would say maybe like 40 minutes. But if you're going to be in the area, this is definitely a good place to check out. Or if you live in Orlando now and you want to go on a little trip, 
Vesper is absolutely amazing. They make like craft and specialty cocktails and um, coffee and they'll blow your mind honestly they once had a coffee that came in like a terrarium and it had like um i don't even know exactly what it was it had like sugar that looked like dirt and then it had like an affogato um with like ice cream and it was just so beautiful and i love their vanilla lattes here as well this was actually where i learned that my uh caffeine triggered (laughs) mental health which is very strange but it did and i honestly cannot recommend vesper enough um we've met the owner a few times he's super cool and yeah they have like board games and stuff so it's a really nice fall treat to go get a drink and play some board games with your friends and have just a really great time. Next up is a place called Marlowe's Tavern. We actually have a few of these throughout the South. Um, I don't know in particular like where else they are in the United States, but I know that there's like two or three in Orlando, which is where I found out from them, found out about them, blah, blah. <laughs> and the thing in particular you have to try at Marlowe's Tavern is the pretzel fondue. It is so good it has like melted brie cheese and you dip your pretzel stick in it and it is so delicious and i really enjoy it another really good thing on their menu is the asparagus fries if you go the fried asparagus with this really good dipping sauce but i wanted to include it on my list particularly particularly for the pretzels because the pretzels with the cheese are only a seasonal option and I always get so excited to go check them out and get some while they're in season because they are so flipping good. You have to check them out. Next up is I think especially cool if you are an international listener, which is to see a football game at UCF, which was my alma mater, so I'm a little bit biased here. But the football games are so much fun. If you've never been to a football game in the United States, which, you know, football is different from your football, like soccer, but um, football here in the United States is honestly so much fun. You don't even really have to be into the sport to participate because especially for college football where the marching band is there and you have dancers and cheerleaders and, you know, people are just revved up in the crowd. It's so exciting and so much fun. And I just thoroughly enjoy going to football games. And if you're going to go to UCF, I do recommend bringing like a pad for your booty because the stands are super, super uncomfortable. However, the game is going to be worth it. UCF is such a great school. I will say we do have some crazy fans that think that we are a lot better than we are, but we're getting there. We're doing really well, and I think that you will really enjoy yourself if you go check out a game at UCF. It's also the second largest university in the United States, so it's also something cool to just check off your list if you are an avid traveler and see just how massive our school truly is. Next on the list, of course, is Food and Wine Festival. Food and wine is like literally the epitome of fall for me. I, Whenever we used to live in Orlando, Blake would watch football like all day Sunday. And then maybe if I was lucky at night, we got to go to food and wine and have some treats or go to the parks and just have some fun. And this is what I think of so much um, in particular is food and wine because I just love those little treats. I love pretty much all the festivals at Epcot. I love just the little samples that you can get. I wasn't really an avid drinker. I say avid drinker like I'm an alcoholic, but <laughs> like I wasn't really, I didn't know what I liked when I lived in Orlando when it comes to drinking. So I think now when we go back, it'll be even more exciting because, you know, I'm a little bit more cultured in what I like to drink and also being a bartender, I'm a little more trained in alcohol consumption so I kind of know like what is better for me to drink. Anyway, that's completely unrelated but food and wine, if you've never been, you have to go. There are so many different amazing treats at Epcot um, which feature dishes and drinks from all around the world. And they are absolutely delicious, especially if you're lucky and you get a little Florida fall breeze. It's just a beautiful day. It's so much fun. Next is City Walk. So I have mini golf at City Walk. City Walk. 
And this mini golf is a little bit expensive, but I think that it's really worth it. Blake and I did this once and it was a lot, a lot of fun. Um, they really put a lot of theming into their mini golf experience at CityWalk and Universal. And I think it would be such a nice date night, like if you did mini golf and then like toothsome. Toothsome is absolutely delicious. I want to do a whole episode just on my favorite food in Orlando because I have so many different fun places. But toothsome in particular is just absolutely delicious and the theming is incredible. I recommend the chocolate creme brulee. It is so delicious. And as far as food goes, I'm trying to think what I usually get. I feel like I change it every time, but their broccoli and cheddar soup is delicious. I've had their quiche. Um, they're just so delicious. So Tucson is really good. There's so many places in City Walk, honestly, like Cowfish. Cowfish is delicious. They have really good sushi. And my favorite is their fried pickles. And I'm honestly not the hugest fan of Voodoo Donuts. I want to do an Unpopular Opinions episode and um, and Voodoo Donuts and Sprinkles Cupcake are probably going to be in there because I don't think that they deserve as much hype as they get. I'm so sorry, guys. But there's so many other places like Tucson that have incredible desserts. And these are some good places too to check out if you're going to Halloween Horror Nights. Obviously not this year, but maybe in future years to come because you could go to like Tucson beforehand and if you do like Voodoo Donut you could do Voodoo Donut and yeah it'll just be a really great time for the fall. Another place in um, City Walk before we move on well actually not City Walk but Universal is getting butterbeer at Diagon Alley or you could get it in Hogsmeade either one would work but I love Diagon Alley because I used to work there, so I think I'm, I love it a little bit extra. But the butterbeer is like so delicious for fall. I prefer the regular butterbeer. I know a lot of people prefer the frozen one, but I'm a big fan of the regular butterbeer. Or a lot of people don't know this, but there is soft serve butterbeer ice cream, which is also absolutely delicious at... Florian Fortescue's, which is right across the way from Gideon's, <laughs> Gideon's, from, uh, why do I want to say Galleons, not Galleons, what is it called, Gringotts, <laughs> and yeah, they have the Butterbeer soft serve, and they also have this one um, ice cream, which is a salted caramel blondie, and it's so good for fall, it's one of my favorite treats, and I highly, highly recommend if you're into pumpkin, you might like the pumpkin juice. To me, it's a little bit too strong, but some people seem to really like it. So definitely Diagon Alley and uh, Hogsmeade are great places. I just feel like the Harry Potter movies in general remind me so much of fall. So I think Harry Potter in the parks is why I <laughs> really do associate them with fall. Next up, you've probably heard me talk about it before if you've been to the podcast multiple times, which is Gideon's Cookies at East End Market. You probably can tell I'm excited about this one because I said it like 20 seconds too early, <laughs> but Gideon's are the absolute best chocolate chip cookies in the world. You heard it here fo first, folks. They are so delicious. They are absolutely massive. It's literally $5 for a cookie because they are so big and so dense. And you may have heard that Gideon's is opening a location in Disney Springs. So when they go to Disney Springs, I'm going to be really, really excited. I do hope they are able to keep their integrity of fresh treats. I'm sure that they will because the owner seems like he really does take pride in his job and his work. And I just, I'm a little bit worried that being in a place like Disney Springs where they're going to have such a high volume of orders, they're going to be pumping them out really fast. I hope that that does not degrade the quality because if you go to East End Market where they are right now, it's a super small market. It literally has like maybe like five or six little restaurants and shops in it and Gideon's is like so popular there that they sell out almost every day so i'm curious to see how disney springs is gonna go but they have these incredible cookies they have the chocolate chip ones i definitely recommend you get because they're just a classic but they usually have different flavors and they also have cake slices of the day and then you can get custom made cakes which i'm trying to convince blake to get me for my birthday this year because they just look so delicious and honestly, you just have to try them because like I said, baked goods in the fall, there's nothing better. 
Next up is a place called Wild Florida. And I put this on the list for fall because if you do get lucky and you get a little bit of a chilly day in Florida, this is the perfect thing to do on that day. So Wild Florida has a lot of animal encounters and me and Blake did the sloth encounter, which was so cool. We got to take pictures with a sloth, feed a sloth. We got to touch and pet the sloth. And they have a bunch of different animals you can do as well. I'm not going to say any because I don't know for sure which ones that they have. But I know that they had like five or six different ones you could choose from when I picked the experience when we did it for Blake's birthday a couple years ago. And honestly, it was so much fun. I love supporting like animal... I don't want to say zoos, but like animal, um, I don't know the word, animal habitats and like people who care for the animal community, I guess I should say, because um, this particular place, they put a lot of money into conservation and um, they're a small business and it was so much fun. When you do the encounter, you also get a ticket to go through their wildlife park so you can see all the other animals. And it's such a beautiful fall day and we really, really enjoyed it. Okay, next I have five things on my list that are on my Orlando bucket list, but I have never particularly done. So if you do check these out, let me know how you like them. I'm not saying I would recommend them. I'm just saying that they are things that I would really be interested in checking out. I've never done them before, so proceed with caution. But from what I've seen, people really, really enjoy them. So I'm really excited to check them out. So first on my list is the Silver Moon Drive-In, which is in Lakeland. And I have heard a lot of people talk about the Silver Moon Drive-In Theater because it is a vintage drive-in theater and they play a lot of vintage movies and I know that they have a really cool list of Halloween movies coming out. Um, Blake and I went to a movie theater in Lakeland. I don't know if it was Silver Moon but we had a really good time. We saw Jumanji. No, I think it was the first one. We saw Jumanji. Jumanji. Why can I not talk today? Jumanji there. And it was so much fun. Drive-in movie theaters are just so perfect for fall because like I said, I mean, Florida doesn't get chilly too often, but if you do get lucky with a chilly day, you can just put down your windows, enjoy the nice breeze, and you can bring your own snacks and stuff, which I find really fun. Some drive-in theaters allow pets, so you can cuddle up with your pet, like in the back of your car, um, which I just really, really enjoy. And I'm really excited to take my new car and check it out. So I'm excited for that. Next up is a place called the Tea Room Experience where you can get a bunch of different teas and little finger sandwiches and pastries. And I think that this is so fall to me because it's just so fun, like getting a little bit dressed up and going to have like a really fun tea experience. And I'm really excited. I want to definitely check it out with my sisters. I think it would be so much fun. And I just am really excited for that. Next up are Edward Scissorhands filming locations so if you didn't know edward scissorhands filmed throughout um like the orlando area not really in orlando but more like lakeland and some surrounding communities um you can go to the neighborhood where it was filmed you can go to the shopping center where it was filmed if you want to find more exact addresses you can look it up on like google is where i found all of the addresses but it looks so much fun. Edward Scissorhands is a really great Halloween movie if you've never seen it. Winona Ryder is an absolute like angel goddess princess in that movie. I don't even know how to describe her. And Johnny Depp is just incredible as Edward Scissorhands. I love that movie. It is so sweet and sad but really good. And I think it'd be super cool to go to all the filming locations, especially in the fall, since it kind of is like a spooky like Halloween movie. And then lastly on my list is a place called Sweet Sheba Desserts. And this looks so cute. So their theming is around like Shiba Inus, like the dogs. And they have like little stickers with, it says Sweet Sheba and the little dog on it. And what they're known for is their crepe cakes, like crepe like, or crepe, however you pronounce it like from France, like the really, really thin like pancakes where you get like toppings. That's how they do their cakes is just layers and layers of the crepes with like fillings on the inside and they look so delicious. And 
I put this on the list for fall because it is like a um, cafe type of thing. And like I said, I think that um, like cafes and coffee and pastries are so fall. And this place in particular just looks so delicious and so cute. And I love the theming and I'm just really excited to check this place out. So if you guys check any of those places out, definitely let me know. Well, guys, that is it for today's episode. I hope that you enjoyed. The next couple of weeks, I will have some special guests. So I'm really, really excited to share with you guys some of the people who are coming on to the podcast. I cannot wait. Like I said, please be sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening on. And please be sure to give me a rating and review. And if you do give me a review, please leave your Instagram or YouTube or podcast handle so that I can also give you a shout out in my next episode. And anyway, guys, thank you so, so much for listening. I hope that you have a very happy and safe fall season wherever you are in the world. And if you are making the trek to Disney or Universal or Orlando in general, I hope that you have a really, really great time. We are planning on making a trip around November or December to go to Orlando, so we are really, really excited for that. Hopefully more things will be open and things will be a little bit safer by then, but who knows at this point. That's what we were all saying back in like March, (laughs) so who knows? But please be sure wherever you go to be super safe, to wear your mask, wash your hands, take your vitamins, keep your social distancing. And if you're going to somewhere that has specific rules, please follow the rules. I just can't stand all the videos of people who refuse to wear their mask at Disney. If you don't want to wear a mask, that's your choice. But when you're going to a business that specifically says you need to wear a mask, you are therefore choosing to follow that business's rules. So I don't understand why people are going to the parks and then refusing to wear their mask, even though they knew it was a rule before they went. Anyway, little tangent there. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. I hope that you're having a wonderful, wonderful week. And I will see you. Well, not really see you, but you'll hear from me in the next episode. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for listening to the Mouse Club Podcast. To find us on Instagram, follow us at the Mouse Club Podcast. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Mouse Club Podcast or on our website, themouseclubpodcast.com to find all of our episodes, links to our social channels, and our YouTube channel, which will be coming soon. To follow our host, Marissa Potts, that's me. Check me out on YouTube, Marissa Potts, on TikTok at marissa.potts, on Instagram at little miss Maris, M-R-S Maris. Thanks so much for listening. See you next week. Bye.